We've all had to deal with state management problems in our applications at some point or another. It's a common joke that state's one of the few hard problems we actually deal with with applications. And that's why I'm confused why we keep making it harder by not using the best state manager the browser gives us the URL. I know when I was at Twitch, I was using the URL for state all over the place. Maybe not so much in the public facing Twitch stuff, but internally for things like our admin panel, when people would write really complex search queries to go through chat logs, reports, and stuff like that, putting that all in the URL params made life significantly easier. Not just because we had one global place for that state to be stored. More importantly, you could now copy paste those URLs and share them with other members of the team. So it was way easier to document, share, and reproduce specific states of the page. It became clear very quickly for us internally at Twitch that the URL bar was an underappreciated part of the React state management ecosystem and lifecycle, we wanted to use it more and more. Thankfully, it seems like more React devs are starting to notice the benefits of this too. And I want to showcase a few of these examples and other developers who are recognizing the benefits of using URL and query params in particular for storing more and more of your global state. We should definitely start with this tweet from Lee Rob that made all of this discourse happen. I haven't actually watched the video yet, so. I've been reading a lot of questions on the Next.js subreddit and Discord asking about state management and what you should or should not do. So I wanna show a quick example here with Next.js Commerce that we recently rebuilt with the app router. I wanna show how you can take advantage of the URL to store state. So for example, on this e-commerce page I have here, if I change the color of the shirt, let's say I want a black shirt and I want it in a size small, both of these are then reflected in the URL. So this is what I was saying before, where it's really valuable to put that in the URL, not just because it's like a global or it's easy, specifically because it makes the URL more, I don't know how to put it other than it gives the URL enough context to be shared more meaningfully. Since he made these changes, now if he copy paste this URL and sends it to somebody like in a chat room or something, it's going to link not just to the right place, but to the right substate from that place. State for this page. We can even do that for the images as well too. Another example of this is the search page. So if, for example, I search for mug, you can see that it's persisted in the URL with the query equals mug. I can refresh the page. I can navigate back and see all my products. I could even filter these on the side and have that updated in the URL. And again, it still works when I refresh. And actually, if we go take a look at the code, the programming model is probably easier than what you expected. So for search here, we have an input and it takes a default value from search params, the use search params hook in Next.js, and we get the query value here. And then when you change something in the search or when you submit the search, it just triggers on submit in this form and that calls this function. So this function is gonna get the value. It's gonna create a new search params object with that value. If the params already exist, well, we can just set it with the new search params, otherwise delete that query and then push the new value of slash search plus whatever the params are and navigate to that route. Relatively simple. You make the change, it appends it to the query params in the URL. That solution isn't the most type safe. And if you wanted things like numbers in there, it's not gonna help a whole lot, but it's really good overall. And there was also a missing key in the example that had to be added in order to make sure that the input renders correctly. But, uh, yeah, I think it's much nicer to use some type of wrapper that gives you better access, ideally type safe access to query params so that you don't have to do all of that work to translate to and from the URL bar. Overall, really nice to see people exposing URL state and using it properly for these types of things. I still think the DX can be better and Tanner is working really hard on this. Search param patterns I see in apps that use them for anything remotely serious are so busted. They have render side effects, inconsistent inlined defaults, flat and zero dependencies, imperative or delayed configuration, manual restoration defaults, and fallback. With Tanstack Router, he's looking to solve all of these things with like good type safety, declarative defaults, which is actually really nice to guarantee you always will have a value of some form, schema-driven type safety. So you actually define what the page can take and what contents the URL params can handle, and it'll handle all of that. It also serializes and handles the input and output of things in query params much better too. And you can serialize things you wouldn't normally be able to, like a date time. You'll assume, I really care about the data loading aspect. Yeah, it's not his favorite part. He's much more interested in building a type safe router that has like good autocomplete and all the other behaviors. The data loading is something he feels stuck doing because it's an expectation now. Good stuff. There's a couple other libraries that make it really easy to interface with the query params. You can even write your own custom hooks for it. Not necessary, 
I think the more important thing isn't how you implement it, it's why you're implementing it. And the system to decide which state you're putting in the URL versus not. The general rule I use for making the decision is around user behaviors. If I would want the state that the page is in to still be there when I refresh, or more importantly, I want that state to still be there when I copy paste the URL and send it to somebody else, then it almost certainly belongs in the query params. If I wouldn't want that, like my expectation as a user would be that a refresh would change the content of the page. Like if I had a calculator app and I refreshed, I'm not expecting the same number to still be in the input box there. But if I'm on a e-commerce site and I picked a color for the shirt, I probably am expecting the color of the shirt still gonna be selected. And using those expectations we have as users to decide what goes in the query params versus what goes in use state, that's when I find you get the clearest insight for where your state should go. And when you're using the query params for state, you get a lot of really nice benefits from better server rendering patterns to reliable URL sharing to true global access to that data across your web application. I think query params are an incredibly underrated part of modern web dev, and it's really cool seeing developers like Lee Rob and like Tanner pushing for us to use them more and better in the applications that we build. What about you? Do you use query params for things? What are your thoughts on using this type of stuff for state? If you wanna learn more about my thoughts on state and React as a whole, I'll pin a video about that in the corner there. And if you're not interested in that, if you've already seen it, there's a video YouTube thinks you're gonna like right below it. So check this out if you haven't already. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.